Many years ago, in the first few decades of the 20th century, in one of the most important monasteries in Cambodia, there was a young novice monk by the name of Samane Un. Samane Un was a naughty monk who was about to get kicked out of the monastery. Before he left, though, he climbed to the top of the spire of the temple in one last act of defiance and began to sing Lotus Flower Offering. Matam At that time, the king, who lived nearby in his palace, heard a beautiful sound coming from the monastery. He asked his advisors, who could ever sing so beautifully? Bring this person to me at once. As the king spoke, Samane Un continued. Matam Samane Un was then allowed to stay a monk. A few years later, he became known as Balat Un by the order of the king and became perhaps the most famous smo or dharma song master of the 20th century. My own journey into the Cambodian dharma song tradition began five years ago. I was working in Phnom Penh, as Linda said, for Cambodian Living Arts, an NGO that works to support performing arts education. My intended research project was about music and Buddhism, but I wasn't quite sure where to begin. A friend at Cambodian Living Arts lent me a CD of a man named Prum Ud. Curious, I played the first track. Lord Nang a 
come to Cambodia. I had come to study from this man. After several months of language learning in the capital, I set off to the countryside to meet my teacher. <clears throat> Arriving at a rural house at the foot of a small hill, two Dharma song masters were waiting for me. A tall, white-haired man named Prum Ud and a younger blind woman with short-cropped brown hair named Gaut Ran. Prum Ud smiled broadly as I bowed to him in respect. Gaut Ran placed her warm hands on my cheeks to feel the contours of my nose and face as if to remember me. The two masters led me to a house on stilts where 15 of their students waited on the floor inside. Sitting up stoically, Brumut cleared his throat and began filling the room with his mellifluous voice. The sweet sound seemed at odds with the striking severity of the lyrics. As I will do for the remainder of the talk, I'll sing just the first stanza in the original Khmer or Cambodian, and then sing my translation into English, which usually retains the meter and the rhyme of the original. Anicca <laughs> Sangha shadow cast by suffering anatta sankhara all is void all is devoid Fame rank even parents, nothing remains to call. 
call you your wealth the worst poverty You can take anything with you. You'll lie there like an old shoe. The body's truly empty. The students and I applauded softly before turning to Gaoran. With her unadorned, steady voice, she sang verses from the Tarma song, Orphan's Lament. <laughs> ตายจรวงกาลมายรวนเอาทนอมบ่มเปยมันเฮียนเต่าชงายเจ้าก้นเต่คลายก้นเพียงหลัง How long and how deep Before I'd sleep You'd hold me tight Mother, you'd sing all through the night Lest I in fright Should wake and cry Mother, I For your grace, ne'er again your face will I see. Alone I burn in agony, what misery. Gautran's blind eyes bore the scars of past trauma, but her voice resounded with the dignity of someone who had met suffering with unstoppable kindness. Every afternoon for the next five months, I studied with the two masters and their students. At night, I returned to Brumut's one-room house to kneel on the wooden floor and study from him by candlelight until everyone in the village was fast asleep. We pored over the folded pages of traditional manuscripts as I memorized the rhyming stanzas and flowing melodies, Brumut patiently correcting my vocal technique and pronunciation. I was drawn to Dharma songs for their hauntingly beautiful exposition of Buddhist doctrines. But I was surprised to find that many Dharma songs were in fact dramatic stories of grief and loss that to me at the time seemed unrelated to the classical Theravada path to liberation. 
What is the importance of Dharma songs, I wondered then, if they didn't deal directly with the path to Nibbana? One day I brought this question to Gauran. She replied, Dharma songs are very important. They allow us to contemplate our existence. We use Dharma songs to calm our hearts. We use them to cleanse our hearts so that we can be free of greed, hatred, and delusion. We use them to be stirred and to be stilled. Yes, I responded. I understand some songs are about contemplating our existence, but what about one of your favorite songs, Orphan's Lament, that tells a story of loss? In Orphan's Lament, Gautran explained, the father dies and the daughter is left with her mother. Then one day the mother also dies. <coughs> After she dies, the child is stirred, the child experiences quaking. Don't you understand? We contemplate the story so that we can be stirred and change our lives for the better. Gautran's answer shocked me out of my naive belief that only songs dealing with the path to Nibbana were Dharma songs. For Gautran, any song that allows us to contemplate our existence, calm our minds, and be stirred is a Dharma song. She further explained that Dharma songs stir us and still us if we have affinity for the Dharma. By stirring here, Gautran refers to the Pali word sangwega, literally shaking, but figuratively in the sense of being stirred or being moved, or being shocked even, especially by impermanence. By stilling, she is talking about pasada, literally settling, like mud settling in a glass of water, but also meaning the stilling of the heart, a joyful experience of pure devotion. And by affinity, she uses the term nisaya, literally dependence, but figuratively, a sort of karmic connection or karmic affinity or this tree that sprouts from wholesome seeds sown in the past, whose branches stretch out to embrace us all. The first song I sang is intended to evoke stilling or pasada, and the next two are intended to evoke stirring or sangwega. The theme of nisaya or affinity connects through all these songs. Gautran connects to orphans' lament because she herself was orphaned. Brumut connects with songs about impermanence because he, works for, he worked for decades as an undertaker in addition to witnessing the death of his family under the Khmer Rouge regime. I connect to the first song by Balat Un because it was the song that drew me to this tradition and because I studied it with Prum Ud, whose teacher in turn studied it directly from Balat Un. My place in a way came in this tradition came by accident. Tassahara was full, so I accepted a research position in Cambodia. <laughs> I am a student, perhaps a scholar, but certainly not a teacher of Dharma songs. My main role now is archiving the tradition so that Cambodians and others interested in the future may hear and be moved by the beautiful melodies I was privileged to study. I am here today only because my teachers, Brum Ut, Gautran, and others told me that I must share these songs of the world so that others may hear these stories of stirring and stilling and feel affinity for them. Songs of stilling often use major scales, like da 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 da, or da 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 da. One of the most famous Dharma songs, Invitation to Preach, uses this latter scale. Sangham patai prom.
This song, performed daily in Cambodia to invite a monk to give a sermon, tells the story of how the Buddha was first reluctant to teach after his awakening. He feared the dharma was too subtle and that by teaching it, he would only confuse people. But there was a deity named Sahampati Brahma who knew that there might be beings with only a little dust in their eyes who might be able to grasp the dharma. So he implored the Buddha to teach. Sangham Pate Brahma Having sung these verses Bow to the Buddha Inviting to teach The Lord accepted And consented to preach With a silent smile Imbued with compassion The Lord then arose And walked towards the dear park Ever so slowly Every step One by one Another song that is intended to evoke the settled conviction and still heart of Pasada was the first song I sang, Lotus Flower Offering. Fresh buds of lotus Contrast, dharma songs of stirring use different scales, usually dominant ones like bum, bum, ba, da, bum, or bum, ba, da, da, bum. Songs that use these scales are more often heard in times of mourning and grief. Sometimes these melodies become exactly the sound of wailing exactly the sound of lamentation. Bye. 
ังขยมมือขยมดาดำรองตาดองตักได้กันเดียดก้ออมจีมวยอำรักลอนสโนกกรักตามมียเคียงอ This song, another favorite of my teacher g a u r a n tells the story of the Buddha in a past life. When he was born as Suvarna Sama, the son of two hermits living in the jungle, one day, as his parents were gathering fruit, a snake sprays venom into their eyes, blinding them. Suvarna Sama then perfects his loving kindness by caring for them. At the end of the story, Suvarna Sama is mistaken by a hunter for a deer, shot and left for dead. This song relates Suvarna Sama's. Lament after he realizes that in his death, no one will remain to care for his parents. Gautran feels a close affinity for this song, because not only did she lose some of her family to the Pol Pot regime, but she was also blinded as an adult in a farming accident. Oh. <laughs> My destiny is it so to be pierced by this arrow? The blood soaks slowly through. Serve the ones who bore me. Not only one, but now three. Me, death with me here today. My. Strife comes my way, mother. Come to help me today. Passing away, me for you. Shot me, I vanish. 
Tell my parents I anguish A humble wish Please tell them Dharma songs like this tell stories of mythic pasts that relate to the suffering we have all faced in our lives. In this way, Dharma songs express what is most intimate, express what our hearts cannot dare to say for fear of imminent impermanence. But as much as Dharma songs connect to mourning and grief, there is also a tradition of healing of going beyond lamentation, beyond life and death. My teachers often spoke of the power of certain dharma songs to allow the terminally ill, the terminally ill, to be stirred and then be stilled, to come to a place of peace and rest, sometimes even to live for another few years. This movement from quaking to clarity, from shaking to settling, from stirring to stilling, in some ways it's as natural as the movement of night to day or inhalation to exhalation. Imagine a glass of water made murky by chunks of mud. In a way, this is what our minds are like. The experience of sangwega or stirring shakes up the glass so thoroughly that for a moment we don't even know what's the water and, and what's the mud. But if the glass is allowed to be still, then the particles can settle to the bottom, leaving the water bright and clear. This is pasada. The gift of dharma songs is that they can uniquely vivify this process for the receptive listener. When the Buddha was about to pass away, he spoke to his closest disciple, Ananda, saying, Yovo Ananda, O oh, O oh, Ananda, when I am gone, the Dharma and the Vinaya shall be your teacher. Conditioned things are of the nature to pass away. Practice heedfully. This Dharma song puts the Buddha's final words in the intimately human context of being with a dear friend as he is dying. Don't delay, I will pass away, leaving you here behind, oh friend, please. Be well, don't weep for me, your friend. I will leave you now. Oh, don't grieve. Ananda. Body will break apart and dissolve. Stay, stay, Ananda. Contemplate your body. Contemplate this
this deeply I, when I pass away you must bear my teaching truly this teaching remains with anyone who clear and bright in heart who follows what I teach now The Tathagata will end in Nirvana old age. Cruelly comes to crush and cut off. Dharma songs give voice to the Buddha, to his disciples, to his family. They are intimate expressions of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and awaken our capacity to feel, to sense, to bear witness, and to empathize. But I didn't really begin to feel the heart of these songs until I went back to Cambodia for the fourth time in 2008 to volunteer with an organization doing Buddhist chaplaincy for AIDS patients. That experience humbled me to the core. It began to put me in touch with what I saw was at the core of this tradition. Songs that can touch the grit of existence. Songs that reveal the everyday cauldron of suffering. In their well-worn language and tearful devotion, guiding people across boundaries of birth and death with their untraceable melodies and timeless phrases, Parma songs resound the funeral drum of impermanence, suffering, and non-self. They tell stories of devotion in vivid, vital ways that recall centuries of melted wax and incense, incense ash on altars. <coughs> traditions of lamentation, like Dharma songs, traditions of contemplation, like Dharma songs, are so important that should they end, the whole world would go quiet with stifled sobs and swallowed gulps of mourning. One day, as I was coming home from doing chaplaincy and work in Cambodia, I thought I was losing my mind. I was so confused about sitting with a patient one day and finding she was dead the next. The only thing I knew was to return to the sacred texts of this tradition and let them speak. This song evokes the power of a kind of Cambodian funeral music called Kolong Kai. Kolong Kai Shouts and echoes La la of all living beings never last long and soon must end birth leads to death forms decay Glong Kike shouts and shouts and echoes 
Youth slips away, death's never found. Old age stocks close and can be shaken. It answers to Glong Kaik shouts and shouts and echoes. No love for truths go beyond death. Take truth's pillow to the far shore rest free from pain in peace and In the spring of 2009, while I was preparing to give a lecture on karma songs in Long Beach, I wrote a song dedicated to my teacher, Brum Ud, who at that time was very ill. I would like to share this song with you in closing. And the melody for this song is called Bimbiya Bilia, or the lamentation of Bimba Yashodara, the Buddha's wife. And it was the melody of one of his favorite songs.
Treat books with care so gently And to daily uh, humbly pray To the three jewels, our teachers, and all creatures till the day. You and I must fade away, die and decay, ah, 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 chasing peace. Brahm Oud passed away on July 4th, 2009, surrounded by dozens of family and friends in his village. We sung Dharma songs day and night through monsoon rains for the last three days of his life. When the sky finally cleared and he took his last breath, laying peacefully in the sun on a wooden bed between his home and the rice fields. We sang. Mato. May all beings be free from suffering. May all beings be happy. May all beings be well. Thank you very much.